Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you a quick movie review. This time we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, uh, which was released in 1985, I believe. Yep, I'm right. <laughs> um, and, of course, this is a sequel. Well, it's a sequel among many sequels in this franchise, but, you know, following uh, Part 4, the final chapter in particular, which we all know is never the final chapter. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it stars... John Shepard, Melanie Kinnaman, uh, Shepard Ross, um, Richard Dion, uh, I, I could just go down the whole cast list, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see, I just want to see who, yeah, and, uh, Tom Morga as, uh, Jason Voorhees, or, you know, Roy Burns. So, yeah, this film takes place a little bit after part four. It's not really specified how long, but it seems like it's been a while because, you know, Corey Feldman is playing Tommy Jarvis in uh, Part 4, and all of a sudden he looks like an adult now. So it seems like a good 10, 15 years have gone by at least. Um, but that was kind of forced to be an issue because um, Corey Feldman is originally going to star in this movie again as Tommy Jarvis at uh, some kind of, you know, foster care or uh, you know, some type of uh, home like that for, you know, troubled you know, youngsters or uh, minds who have just been through a lot of trauma or something like that. Um, but he was actually uh, working on The Goonies at the time, which was mo much more successful than uh, this regular sequel, that's for sure. Um, so he wasn't able to make more than a cameo, which we do see at the beginning of the film. He has a nightmare of Jason, um, you know, which is pretty cool. And those are probably the best parts of the movie, honestly. The nightmares and the visions that Tommy has of Jason, the real Jason. Um, Meanwhile, we have this uh, copycat killer going around. Um, he has a different hockey mask, no red marks, but he has those, uh, you know, blue on the side and everything. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is definitely one of the more looked down upon entries in the series. For a while, it was my least favorite, and I've been rewatching all the sequels again with my girlfriend, so I might have to wait until I watch part nine or something again to really know for sure, um, or just watch all of them again to really get a feel for her. How I perceive all of them at this point, um, but watching it again, it, it might still be my least favorite. <laughs> um, like even the director who played Roy Burns, he uh, he has a uh, you know, shit talk this movie for uh, quite a bit. Um, you know, he was saying he didn't realize until after he saw it himself just what a piece of trash it was. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a, something to say about a movie you're involved in. Um, but also, there was some interference with this movie. This movie was uh, cut and like edited down quite a bit for the violence they had in some of the kills. Um, some of it was thought to be too extreme by the MPAA and everything like that. So, you know, that's definitely part of it, but the kills themselves didn't seem to be that creative anyway, and that's something that, you know, fans enjoy some of these films for, is, you know, the kills. And these are some of the most basic kills we see in this series. Um, there are even kills in the first uh, four films before this that were more unique than this, so it kind of failed on that end. Um, the actor playing Tommy Jarvis in this one, who looks drastically older than Corey Feldman at this point, um, John Shepard, he did an alright job, but uh, it definitely feels odd that he's so much older now and he's still seen as a kid, but I don't know, it was just kind of an odd thing. Um, and it definitely would have felt more natural if Corey Feldman had starred in this one, uh, which probably would have helped the movie a little bit anyway. Um, and then they had the one adult, Tommy, in part six. You know, the actor who ended up playing him in that it would have felt like a more natural you know, transition for sure instead of just recasting guys who look kind of different from each other. Um, but uh, yeah, so and uh, a number of fans also hate this movie just because it's not Jason killing people. Um, you know, it's a copycat, so, and, you know, that kind of takes away from it for, for me, too, in a way, because, you know, Jason Voorhees is my favorite slasher of all time, really close between him and Freddy, but, you know, uh, I may find the Nightmare on Elm Street series a little bit more, um, you know, entertaining, but when it comes to just the characters, Jason is my favorite, you know, individually. Um, so it does take away from the movie for me, just knowing it's not Jason doing all this, um, you know, it's just some guy, you know, taking up Jason's mantle to use for his own purposes. Um, you know, which makes sense, that probably would happen if Jason was that, uh, you know, big of a murderer and everything like that. 
Um, but the story is that, uh, as we discover later in the movie, this guy named Joey, he gets killed. He's this you know, fat kid who's staying at the home. Um, you know, and he was annoying. He was kind of obnoxious, but he had like you know, good intentions, a good heart to you know help everyone. But he got on this guy's nerves and he just got chopped to death, pretty much. <laughs> um, and that's one of the other weird things in the movie. Um, it is a strange father. You know, Roy Burns is the one who ends up killing all these people, but apparently he never kills the guy who actually killed his son, which doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> Um, all I had to do was uh, like, include like a 30 second scene of Roy tracking him down first and killing him and then maybe snapping going after everyone else as well. Um, hold on a second guys, I'm just going to put this up. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, so that never really made sense. I, I tried to find out if there was like a scene cut of that guy's death or something. Um, but, you know, I couldn't find anything on that, so I guess it's just a plot hole. Or something, I don't know. Um, you know, I know innocent people get, you know, harmed in these movies all the time, but why would Roy not kill the guy who actually killed his son first before turning on, like, everyone else who lives and works there? I, I, I don't know. Um... And, you know, they make it pretty obvious that's the, you know, Roy's the paramedic, you know, he's the killer. Because, you know, they have these scenes, of course, of bodies being looked at, and the camera, you know, pans to him right after they say something. So it's not really the most well-done, you know, mystery either. Um, but, you know, it's all right. I, I mean, I liked that they tried to, you know, make it seem like, uh, you know, Tommy was uh, traumatized from the events of Part 4, which he would be. I um, mean, you know, like, say he's having nightmares, and he's sort of... Uh, He's almost mute at the start, you know, he doesn't really say a whole lot throughout the film. Um, so I thought that part was alright, you know, that was fine. Um, and uh, Melanie Kinnaman as Pam, you know, she's uh, one of the main caretakers of the place. Um, besides uh, Dr. Matthew, you know, who they never really do anything with, and so he's seen him pinned up on a tree later. <laughs> Um, but she was kind of weird as well, I didn't really care for her because it seems like both her and Matt are sort of you know, kind of mocking Tommy a little bit at first, but then they seem all caring a couple of minutes later. I, I don't know, it felt weird to me. Um, yeah, honestly, there's just not a whole lot memorable about this film, you know? It's uh, not Jason. It's, uh, you know, has unimpressive un kills, you know, pretty bare bones as far as any movie could do. Uh, the ending isn't really much to write home about either. Um, Roy ends up being, you know, pushed off into a harrow below, you know, just basically impaled. Um, and we see Tommy taken to the hospital at the end of the movie after, you know, he and, uh, you know, a kid as well as Pam survive. The kid is kind of entertaining in the movie. I think his name is Reggie. Yeah, he, he was kind of fun, I guess. Um, and then they play, try to play with this angle that uh, Tommy could potentially snap and go psychotic and turn into like the next Jason or something, which they're kind of teasing at the end of part four as well. Um, they have it here uh, where Pam comes in. And he lo looks like he has Roy's mask on. And he's about to stab her, um, but you know he never really went anywhere with that. Obviously, they're probably intending to. Then they change their minds at some point. I didn't. I don't think it really would have worked that well anyway. So it's probably for the best that they just went back to Jason in part six on both ends. Um, you know, I'm glad I didn't turn into, like, a new killer every time after this or something, you know? Um, I'm glad they brought, uh, you know, the real killer back, so... Yeah, overall, I, I don't know, I didn't really like this one that much. It's not awful, I guess, but it's just really kind of unmemorable, um, com in comparison to a lot of the other movies in the series. Uh, I think both of the first four films are, are better than this. Part 6 is definitely better, so 7, even 8, 9 we'll see about. Um, I even find Jason X more entertaining, which is weird, but it might be weird for some. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason I like more as well, and the remake for sure, so I don't know. This is, don't might be my least favorite. But let me know you guys think about this. Uh, I guess I rated it about a C or C-, minus. Um, but honestly, with the way I'm talking about it, I feel like I should put it lower than that. Um, I don't know. It's not like terrible, but I, don't know, I just didn't really... 
I just don't really enjoy myself, which I guess is a negative. <laughs> um, my girlfriend thought it was okay. Uh, so yeah, I guess I'd probably stick to closer to a C minus range, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so let me you guys thought about this one. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Got a long day of work ahead of me, so see ya.